Welcome and thank you for tuning in to 10 Tesla Topics, your show for Tesla-related news, rumors, and stories. My name is Max Maurice, and during today's episode, I'll fill you in on 10 Tesla Topics from Saturday, January 21st to Tuesday, January 24th, 2017. The topics discussed in today's show are the following. Tesla's crash rate is dropped by 40%. Tesla wants to reduce the crash rate by 90%. Another autopilot update. A look at and into the Gigafactory. Tesla will not stop improving. Taiwan is now part of the Tesla family. Ex-mechanical engineer at Tesla being charged. Tesla slowly increasing autopilot speed. Trump and Musk. And of course, the newest Tesla app. Topic number one comes from Electric. Now, auto steer, as most of you guys know, is kind of the highlight of Tesla's first generation autopilot system. And for those of you who are unaware, well, auto steer is basically just a souped up cruise control slash lane control system. Well, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or the NHTSA's Office of Detect Invest Defects Investigation, or ODI, reviewed crash rate data from Tesla's vehicles before and after the introduction of auto steer. ODI analyzed mileage and airbag deployment data supplied by Tesla for all 2014 through 2016 Model S and Model and Model X, but the 2016 vehicles equipped with autopilot technology package either installed into the vehicle or sold over uh, an over-the-air update, uh, which just a little side note here in case you didn't know, uh, if your car doesn't come with autopilot, but it came with the autopilot hardware, you can always install it after your purchase of the vehicle, uh, just if you didn't know that. Uh, so yes, uh, to calculate uh, crash rates by mile traveled prior to and after the autopilot uh, installation, they came to a conclusion that the data shows that the Tesla vehicle's crash rate dropped by almost 40% after auto steer installation. From 1.3 crashes per million miles before auto steer to 0.8 crashes after auto steer, which is, I mean, a significant drop. The data is particularly interesting in the context of the debate between going between, you know, uh, directly uh, f- to fully autonomous cars or taking the route, you know, of the, the gradually um, more autonomous vehicles leading to full autonomy, like Tesla and a few other makers are trying to do. And now, of course, the argument against the transition between autonomy and manual control is that it can still be dangerous. But Tesla's argument is that it reduced the number of accidents if used properly, which, of course, the data confirms. They went from 1.3 to 0.8 crashes per million miles. And now Tesla, the NHTSA and I, of course, ask uh, all autopilot users to read all instructions and warnings before uh, using the driver assist systems because it still is a fairly new technology, and of course you want to make sure uh, you know how to properly use it um, before using it. Topic number two also comes from Electric, and following the first topic, Elon Musk revealed that the autopilot team wants to reduce the crash rate by 90% of the second generation hardware uh, cars. So not the first generation, but the second generation. The previous uh, topic was about the first generation uh, autopilot, and the, he's talking about the second generation here. Just so we're all clear, I hope uh, everyone understands <laughs> now. So if achieved, that would mean that all Tesla's vehicles produced since October 2016 uh, would crash on average only once every 10 crashes uh, by vehicles without the advanced driver uh, assist system. And, you know, it doesn't really take a math genius to figure out that those odds are pretty good. So, as mentioned, there were roughly 1.3 crashes per million miles before Autopilot's auto steer feature, uh, 0.8 uh, crashes per million miles after auto steer, but they're aiming for a 0.1 uh, crash rate per million miles after the introduction of the enhanced auto steer uh, with Tesla's you know, second generation Autopilot hardware. And the first major enhanced auto steer update was published this past weekend uh, over over an over-the-air software update, which brings me to topic number three. Topic number three comes from Tesla Roddy. Now, Elon, as he often does, announced on Twitter that Enhanced Autopilot will be rolled out to all new vehicles equipped with Hardware 2. 
The -the over-the-air software update is intended to bring newer generation Model S and X vehicles equipped with the Autopilot 2.0 hardware to be somewhat on par with Tesla's first generation Autopilot. Now, this weekend's update uh, represents the next iteration of Enhanced Autopilot, which was first released in limited quantity at the end of 2016, followed by a soft launch to a combined 1,000 Model S and X vehicles. Tesla owners that were part of the first batch to receive Enhanced Autopilot reported seeing that their vehicle's auto-steer functionality gradually came to life after calibration period. However, Musk noted in his tweet that some vehicles that never completed calibration may require autopilot camera adjustments. Topic number four comes from electric. So things are getting pretty busy at the Gigafactory this month. Tesla and Panasonic have confirmed the start of the battery cell production and volume production of Powerwall 2 and Powerpack 2. And keep in mind that this is all being, uh, you know, produced while the Gigafactory is also being produced or under construction. So Tesla released this week a new drone footage showing the progress of the Gigafactory. The current structure has a footprint of 1.9 million square feet, uh, which houses 4.9 million square feet of operational space across several floors. And it represents less than 30% of the final plan. So what you're seeing in this video here, this is less than like a third done, which is insane to think about. And earlier this week, uh, Tesla also confirmed that Model 3 drive units will be produced at the Gigafactory, and they announced an additional $350 million investment for 550 more jobs in order to accomplish their new production goals. Topic number five comes from Engadget. And so Tesla keeps moving forward, and it has happened on several occasions in the past. Now, here's just a little quick rundown of their past history, uh, not necessarily in chronological order. So they implemented a dual motor option, uh, autopilot hardware, a second generation autopilot hardware, a performance version, a better performance version, and then an even better performance version. Now, of course, I am talking about the P85D the P90D, and the uh, the newest P100D. Now, these are major changes. I'm not really including uh, some minor changes like, uh, you know, exterior color or interior, you know, trim finishes, um, but uh, they, they do exist. Anyways, all that to say, many, you know, or, uh, owners ordered or even took delivery of their cars months, uh, weeks, uh, or sometimes even days before a big improvement and, you know, kind of missed out on it. And, you know, if, if you were one of those people, I can understand that you may be, you know, just a little mad at Tesla for making these changes, uh, for the most part, without any warning or, or publicity at all. They, they just kind of, you know, you update the, the store and there's, oh, there, there's a 100D now. And so it, it's subtle changes. Well, Elon is telling customers that there will be major revisions every 12 to 18 months. Not quite yearly, but, you know, far more frequently than um, every few years at best uh, that you see from other car companies. Now, he adds that retrofits uh, would slow the company's progress dramatically. And for example, you know, adding self-driving tech to an earlier vehicle would require stripping the entire car and replacing 300 parts. So it's it's not really worth it. You're, you're better off to just buy a new one, as bad as it sounds, but... But, you know, maybe you have a different opinion um, about it, it being a, a good or bad thing. But, you know, I don't I don't blame them uh, because Tesla operates more like a tech company, really, uh, than an automaker. Now, you can compare them to Apple, for example. So, you know, uh, and I am one of these people. Uh, so where you buy the iPhone 5S and then the Sync. Uh, the the six and the six plus I think they came out at the same time but they came out like just a couple months after I bought my my iPhone 5s so I was a little bummed out about that and you know it's the same for for the se and the seven and the seven plus and I I, I can't even keep up anymore <laughs> but all in all it, it's it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing uh, because it guarantees that you know you'll you'll kind of be getting the cutting edge technology when you buy the car or, or the phone or the laptop or whatever. But it also means that, you know, your technology, so your car, phone, etc., could feel outdated very quickly. Uh, And, and, uh, you know, many Tesla owners are noticing that. 
But I hope this doesn't scare you away from buying a Tesla, of course, if you're in the market uh, for a Tesla. I highly suggest to buy one right now uh, because I don't expect any huge changes um, in the near future because the Autopilot Hardware 2 just came out. Um, and of course, they're, they're slowly making that better, uh, as well as the 100D. So I can't possibly imagine any other major changes. Uh, so yeah, if you're in the market, go ahead and buy one right now. Or you could always buy a certified pre-owned one. Um, but if you're in a market for a Tesla, just, just buy one. Don't even second guess it. Topic number six comes from electric. So Tesla is currently rapidly expanding with new stores, service centers, and superchargers around the world. And well, the newest member or the newest location is in Taiwan. So Tesla announced that it delivered its first batch of vehicles this week to customers in Taiwan. Uh, now here, a little disclaimer, a little warning, I'll probably mispronounce every single name wrong. Uh, but just bear with me here. So Tesla opened its first store in the country uh, of, in the upscale Shinkang Mitsukoshi department store in the Xinyi district of Taipei, the, the nation's capital, uh, last semester, uh, September, not semester, September. And at the time, they were starting to take orders, you know, uh, and it resulted in the first few deliveries in the country on Monday, January 23rd. So just yesterday. The first owners in the country will also uh, benefit from a supercharger station uh, that Tesla also opened this week. Uh, it is lo located at the Taipei Expo Park. And it looks like Tesla anticipates a, a great demand in Taiwan since it's already planning a supercharger expansions in, you know, here we go, in Taichung, Tainan, and Kuaisong. Uh, and it also plans to open service centers and stores in Taichung, Tainan, and, uh, and a few other cities. Topic number seven comes from Electric. And this one isn't the best of topics, but uh, anyways. So Nima Kalbasi is a former mechanical engineer at Tesla who apparently hacked into his former manager's email account after being fired in December 2014 and published confidential customer complaint and false remarks about the company. He was charged... Um, pun not intended there, but he was charged by the FBI in 2015 on two accounts of felony computer intrusion and one account of misdemeanor computer intrusion. Now, last week, he reached a plea agreement by pleading guilty to the misdemeanor count, uh, but not to the two felonies. Now, according to the charges made against Kalbasi, he hacked his former boss's email account about 300 times during the month after being fired and publicly shared customer complaints as an attempt to, of course, mislead the public um, about the re reliability of Teslas. Now, Kalbasi, who unfortunately is a Canadian, come on, man, you're you know, not representing Canada in the best way, but he was arrested in Vermont uh, in August 2015. Law 360 has been working the case and reported that he reached a plea deal last week, uh, but he could still face some jail time. Sentencing is scheduled for June 6th, and Kalbasi faces up to one year uh, behind bars and $100,000 uh, in fines for the misdemeanor charge. The plea agreement is under seal. If we would have if he would have been found guilty of the two counts of felony computer intrusion on top of the one uh, count of misdemeanor uh, computer intrusion, uh, the maximum penalty would have amounted to six years in prison and a $350,000 fine. Uh, I guess he, you know, really should have just minded his own beeswax, maybe? Topic number eight comes from Tesla Roddy. And Tesla Model X and S owners with the Autopilot 2.0 self-driving hardware are beginning to see the auto steering capabilities come to life through the latest version of the enhanced autopilot. And as mentioned on topic number three, Musk posted on Twitter that some vehicles with the autopilot 2.0 hardware may require adjustments to the vehicle's camera pitch in order for calibration to properly take effect. He also pointed out that auto steer will be limited to 45 miles per hour on highway driving up from a previous 35 miles per hour. Now, you might be unaware, uh, I was unaware actually before doing a little bit of research, uh, but the limit for autopilot uh, or, or auto steer on generation one cars are 90 miles per hour. So with autopilot, you can only go up to 90 if you 
wish to go above 90 miles per hour, which I don't recommend, uh, you would have to take autopilot off. So obviously over time and with more updates, the generation two cars uh, will most likely you know, match uh, the 90 miles per hour autopilot limit. And once again, just a little friendly uh, reminder, Tesla still plans on performing a fully autonomous drive from LA to New York by the end of 2017, So, which, which really isn't that far away. Topic number nine comes from Tesserati. Now, Elon Musk sat among other CEOs at President Trump's breakfast meeting to discuss manufacturing on January 23rd. Trump had voted to cut regulations massively by 75% or more and impose a major border tax on companies looking to manufacture products abroad but sold in the U.S. Trump spread the message to the room of executives from companies including Tesla, Ford, Dell, U.S. Steel, and Johnson & Johnson. We'll get to know each other very well, said Trump as he opened Monday's meeting with expectations that it would take place each quarter. This is a worldwide meeting, and what we want to do is bring back manufacturing to our country. Much of Monday's meeting was spent on reaffirming Trump's stance on creating U.S. jobs by bringing the workforce back into the country. However, the discussion would later take a brief turn towards the topic of the environment. Musk's, whose vision for the future revolves around sustainable mobility through electric vehicles powered by solar energy, as we know, sat rather expressionless as Trump praised himself on past environmental awards. Trump said, I'm very... I'm a very big person when it comes to the environment. I've received awards on the environment. Uh, okay, anyways. Uh, so once again, if you want to see the full video, I will post it on my Twitter, as I do with every topic. Um, and my Twitter is at 10 Tesla Topics. Now, one topic that grabbed Musk's attention during the meeting was Trump's discussion around factories. Now, of course, Elon and the team are currently in the middle of building the Gigafactory in Nevada, which is expected to create 6,500 jobs when complete. When somebody wants to put up a factory, it's going to be expedited. And you have to go through the process, but it's going to be expedited. And now we're going to take care of the environment we're going to take care of safety and all the other things we're going to take care of. But you're going to get such a great service. There will be no country going to be faster, better, and more fair. And at the same time, protecting the people of the com com country. Man, I'm stuttering today, uh, said Trump, uh, while placing emphasis on regulation reduction. However, it's unclear how Musk's plan to construct a second gigafactory facility in Europe with with all that talk, you know, about, you know, creating jobs in the U.S. and all that. So it'll be really interesting uh, to see what will happen. So, of course, we'll just have to wait and see. And the last topic of the second episode, topic number 10, comes from Electric. So Tesla's mobile app hasn't received much attention from Tesla's UI and development team over the past four years. In November 2016, Elon Musk announced that Tesla is planning a big update for the app coming late December. Well, it's a little late, but Electric has learned new details about the upcoming uh, app update. Now, sources familiar with the update told Electric that it features a major UI overhaul, including refresh buttons, a more detailed render of the user's vehicle, and the addition of direct hotkeys to the functions instead of having to toggle between different screens. The UI refresh is only one part of the update. Tesla is also introducing several new features, of course. Tesla added touch identification login to the app, and owners can now set up personal identification numbers, or PIN, from the app for people like, uh, like valets uh, to use the car. Now, arguably, the best feature coming uh, with the update is the widget uh, integration. Now, owners can now add a Tesla widget on their phones uh, and access their car's status, including range, charge, and location. Hotkeys can activate uh, from climate controls, remote uh, starting, and lock-unlock from the vehicle from the home screen. Musk said that the app update would be released in December 16th, as mentioned, but it has now been delayed till late January. So hopefully by next episode or maybe a couple episode, uh, a couple episodes from now, I can maybe give a little review um, of the of the app. So those are your ten Tesla topics from Saturday, January twenty first to Tuesday, January twenty fourth, two thousand seventeen. 
For any questions, remarks, or even criticism, I encourage you to follow the show's Instagram and Twitter pages at 10 Tesla Topics. That's T E N T E S L A T O P I C S. Or send me an email at 10 Tesla Topics at gmail.com. That's T E N T E S L A T O P I C S at gmail.com. We'll see you right here next Saturday for the next show. Thank you for listening, and of course, have yourself a model excellent day.